Hi, this is Karen and Will has told me that there's a little bit of a discussion going on about billet placement and where do you put them and why would you put them in different places. So I'm going to do a quick tutorial on that because knowledge is power and you are responsible for your horse's comfort and you're your horse's best advocate. So the more information you have, the better choices you can make because they depend on that. So I, the only saddles I have to demonstrate this are the Horobin saddles because they're the best of horse and why wouldn't you? But, um, and so your saddle may be a little bit different setup, but they are basically all the same. They don't always have as many options, but uh, we'll start with this one. So billet placement, the number one thing you want is that the billets line up with the horse's girth group. Uh, the girth group can be in different places. Uh, Arabs, they tend to be a little further forward and a little more narrow. Some horses have a big sloping shoulder, so the girth groove is way back here because that's their, where their sternum is further back. Their withers are very long. So if you look at the billet placement when the saddle is in the proper place, this one's just a hair behind where the girth would go. So you can see this little pull forward here. And on uh, my horse, because of her conformation, the way she is going right now, saddles tend to want to slide forward. So if your billets are back here, your girth is up there, this is always pulling it forward like that. And it actually encourages it to, and actually makes it go over the shoulder sometimes. The fact, uh, that's probably one of the biggest problems I see is saddles going over the shoulder and we can do a whole different video about that because uh, otherwise this one would be too long. So the opposite happens then. So say, I'm just gonna move the saddle out of place just to line the billets up differently. So if you place your billets a little ahead of where the girth grew, then the opposite happens. It's always encouraging it to stay back and line up back here. So you use your billets and where you, which uh, point billet, middle billet, back billet, depending on how your horse goes. It's not just always a confirmation issue, it's what happens in motion as well. So on this horse, and I'll show you the saddle I ride her in, I use the point billet. I use the first and third. And this is the same for jump saddles. People don't realize, use those three billets to your advantage. A lot of jump saddles, they actually slide backwards. If so, use the back two billets because that keeps the saddle always coming forward a little bit. There have been some horses so extreme, we've actually added a billet even further back because the, uh, their confirmation saddles just head south. So <clears throat> we don't, you can't go any further forward than your point billet. Now, there is a reason why, if you can, stay with the second and the third on dressage saddles, not so much on jumping saddles, but on dressage saddles, stay with the second and the third, only because it's a little bit better not having more pressure right off of the tree point, but better to move it forward and keep it from sliding forward. That's far, far, far worse. So I always try to start with the middle billet and the back billet, but if it doesn't work, we have to go up here, far better. So don't ever worry that if you have to go up there, do it. So we also have, uh, this is, there's a couple different configurations. This one slides. So it's a V billet, meaning it meets together here, hinges and it slides. And this is nice because if I had to move this here, this would just slide up and not, and because of this action, it doesn't necessarily pull this out forward so much. So it just kind of can go into position without a lot of influence. There's some back billets that have this back strap actually goes into a buckle and this is sewn in here so you can actually have a little bit more influence with that back billet because you can tighten it a little bit back here if you need to. Saddles are getting kicked over or something. Let me clarify one thing for a moment. Now yeah. when you're pointing to those billets, now one of the questions that people are asking online, somebody's chiming in that that they were told you should you always have to connect to the front billet because somehow that's connected differently underneath the saddle so what we're looking at there would you actually change the position of this or is this a whole nother billet strap right here yeah and how would you respond to that comment that you always have to have the front billet strap connected well i would say it this way you always have to have the back billet connected always 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 if you have a v billet system you cannot uh, go without using this so what then you have 
never, never get rid of this billet, but what then you can have is two different placements. And yes, these absolutely attach to different parts of the saddles. If you can see this one, this attaches right up here. This one attaches further back. So always use this one, but you have these two options. If you can use this billet a little bit better, just because it, it stays away from pulling down on the tree points, and it stays a little more centered in the horse, but that's not always possible. So don't worry if you have to move it forward. Um, there are some people out there, maybe you don't have the option on your saddles, um, but you can just take this and cross this over. See how this just moved that more forward? So that is an option, crossing your billets. So when would you cross the billets on a horse? If you have no other options. If you have no other options. So these saddles are fa fabulous because we have all of these options. We don't have to do crazy things with them. Um, but not all saddles have that. So some people, you have no other choice. This is all you can do. But it actually works really nicely as well. Because you're still staying away off that point billet and the shoulder. And this is just bringing this forward. So... Sometimes it's an experiment, but you've got to be prepared to do this yourself and just understand the logic behind it. And you can experiment a little bit. Your horse will tell you what works better or not for them. So this is a, like a double flap saddle. Now it looks a lot different when you're talking about a mono flap. And this is the saddle I ride her in. It's Will's right now. It's a little big for me, but you can see here I'm using the point billet. I tried numerous times to use the middle billet, but I couldn't because the saddle just runs over her shoulders. And that is, again, far, far worse than just having to use the point billet. Now, here's your back billet. And this one does have, mm, no, it doesn't. It has the swinging one in there. So this comes out here. So there is another billet inside. I'd have to open this up. But Horbins always come with these three options, one, two, and three. Always use three. You have the options of one and two, okay? Now, again, there's uh, tricky things you can do with billets to solve some crookedness issues in horses. As we say, most horses are right shoulder forward. Saddles want to uh, fall right, twist right. There's some billet placement options you can do to solve that as well. But again, that's another tutorial. If you guys want to know, just let me know, and I'll put this information up. Now, if we look at, when I place this properly on her, look how perfectly those line up. And that's why I see also a lot of jumping saddles. The jumping saddles, the billets are way back here, and they end up here, so all the grooms, or even the owners, put the saddle way forward so the billets line up, not realizing you just now put that saddle right on top of the horse's shoulders. Okay, so... Your best, your best uh, defense is to work with a very, very educated saddle fitter, okay? Um, it's surprising the lack of education some saddle fitters have, and you really need to understand everything that it does to the horse. It either helps or it hinders them, and uh, having a saddle that fits really, really well um, is your first criteria, and... I'm going to harp on this once again because this is the biggest thing. I'm going to take this chance to get up on my soapbox because this is the biggest thing I see is that saddles are not adjusted to the shoulder angle. They're adjusted to the wither angle and actually blocks the shoulder. So you need to feel. See how much room I have just to slide that right through? Because this angle matches her shoulder angle, not the wither angle. Her wither angle is like this. So if I adjusted it to that, I'm blocking that shoulder from going under. This is probably the number one biggest thing that's bad saddle fit can affect the horses with. There's others, of course. So I'll get off that soap, soapbox because we were talking about billets. But um, I hope I made that understandable. If I didn't, send me questions. I'm happy to answer them. We'll do another little video or something. But this is super, super important. And also, uh, it can be a um, problem with girth rubs if your saddle billets aren't placed right. And it's what it does to the... It might be pulling it way too far forward and up against the elbow. And if you have problems with the saddle sliding forward, I can do a little video about that too because that is one more one of the most common things I see. Okay, so I hope that helped. I hope that answered some questions. And if not, let me know.
I'm going to just clarify for yeah. one moment to clarify for everyone. So the point she's making here then I believe, listening to it, is that when you want to set the saddle where it belongs on the horse's back. Okay, and let's do that. Where okay. does it belong? So people ask me this as well. Put it too far forward like this and rock it back. It will lock into place. So right here at the edge of the panel, you'll feel the horse's shoulder, the back of the scapula. Now you have to realize the tree points are further back than that. So we are, it is true, you want two fingers uh, back from the back of the scapula to the tree point. But that doesn't mean the panel. So the tree point is back in here. You could actually, on that other saddle, you could actually see where it uh, hooked up at. So you want that two fingers back. But this will always be on the edge of the scapula. But the scapula, when the horse moves, goes upward and inward like this. So it doesn't come back this way. It goes like this. So once again, the importance of lining the saddle panel up with the shoulder and not the withers so that you tighten it behind the withers. I mean, if you tighten it behind the shoulder. We yeah. want to line it up with the shoulder angle, as she was talking about there, so there's room for the shoulder to move back underneath yes. the saddle. Yes. So once you have that saddle in place then, to reiterate, then your, your billets should hang directly straight into that girth groove down there and hang straight down. So, so if, if they if hang from one other, from either angle, at an angle, you know something is going to be wrong with how the yeah. horse is going to pull the saddle in one direction or another. So you can see this, if the billets come out back here and they have an angle into the girth, they're just going to work their way like this. The girth is always going to be working to try to line that up. It's simple physics. And if you have it too far forward, then it's going to be pulling it well number one you don't need it on the point billet then and it's going to be pulling it but it's going to help be pulling the saddle backwards like this okay because the billets are here girth is there it's going to pull it this way so if you have a horse the saddle slides backwards you want your billets back here so it's always keeping the saddle from sliding backwards and it's keeping it where it belongs if the saddle goes over the horse's shoulders then you want the billets up here always pulling it back off of the shoulders Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you. Go on. So once again, just reiterating that, there's the position of the saddle relative to how straight those billet straps should be. So once you have that saddle in correct position then on the back of the horse, you, you alter the position or adjustments of those billet straps in, to get them as close to hanging straight into the groove as you see there as possible. Would that be what you would say? Yes. Now, here's another... <laughs> I'm going to throw another issue into the fix. If you look at the side here, the, this saddle is very, very nicely balanced. The lowest part is right in the middle. Uh, when I girth it up, it's going to sink down just a little bit in front, but that's okay because it could use that. Now, what happens when your saddle goes out of balance or it's fitted out of balance, okay? So as horses change, what I normally see is that as horses start to push up through here, the withers start to come up and are more defined and the saddle's always dropping down. When it drops down, it lands right there where the shoulders go. Now, here's what else happens to the billet. Look what, look what uh, will happen when the pommel is lower than the cantle. It points the billets backwards. So when I go, in, I go to see people who have their saddles refit, this is almost always what's going on because their horses are improving, coming up here, saddles dropping down, billets are now back here. So what happens then? It's too wide here, and that's one of the reasons saddles slide forward because the angle is too wide. So now you've got the saddle like this, billets are too far back, and it's pulling it forward and it's going right over the shoulder. So you're, you are in a really uh, <laughs> not very good position. So when, really pay attention to your saddle fit. And if everything is going along correctly, unless you have a young horse, typically, you're gonna to want to have to bring the shoulder angle in because the shoulders start to come up. So please pay attention to that because you can have a perfectly fitting saddle, but if you do a good job and your horse changes, then it's not gonna fit so well. And your billets are gonna be in the wrong place. Now, the opposite happens. Some saddles get um, fit like this. So see where the billets are now too far forward? So it's, complicated because there's a lot of different variables that go into this but you have to start with a good fitting properly balanced saddle otherwise you're just this is just secondary okay so 
follow all your steps. Make sure your saddle fits perfectly first, okay? So once again, I want to just follow up here. So once you have your saddle in the right place on the horse's back, those straps should hang loose. If not, it hangs straight. Uh, into the groove there and if they do not then you can adjust them into their various points until they do as close as possible yes. but now I did want you to address there was somebody who comment she was told that you always have to have the front billet strap connected because it's connected that if you connect only the back to that it could, the saddle could come off because there can this is some that somebody wrote in I'm just you know, responding to the questions here so they were told that you always have to be connected to the front billet strap um, now, is that different saddles, you would say, or is that I'm true not, in general? Is that anything not, you've ever heard of? Well, I'm not sure what they're talking about. You always have to have two of them connected. Yes. One of them always has to be the back one. Uh, and uh, let me get the other saddle out because it's a little easier to show. So, yes, you always have to have, you always have, to have the back billet. Now, it's just a question of, Yes, the front billet has to be attached too, but are you in the standard position here or are you in the more forward position? And you do have to understand, these you have to take off and re-sew onto these new positions. They are a totally separate um, billet, okay? So I'm, I'm sorry, maybe you could, the person could clarify a little bit more about what they're talking about, but um, yeah, you always have to have the back and then you have these two choices up here. Okay. All right. Anything else? Thank you very much, Karen Loshbaugh, for okay. giving us another great little instruction on saddle fitting. Yeah. This is Will Faber from Art to Ride. We'll see you next time. Okay.